There's a very famous photograph of James Brown in prison in 1864, and in that photograph he's writing his diary. And I thought no more of that until one day somebody walked into my office some years ago with the actual diary, uh, an astonishing document, all handwritten by the very pen he's using in the photograph. People know Tinwald's been there for about a thousand years, so sometimes they assume that the Isle of Man has had democracy for about a thousand years. Nothing could be further from the truth. It, uh, before, uh, I mean, nobody had a vote before the 1860s. Nobody. I think many of us sort of know a bit of the history of how we became a, a fully fledged democracy and filled in the gap between the Great Reform Act of the UK and the uh, Isle of Man House of Keys Act of 1866. Um, but really, a lot of us are only basing it on what we've read in the, the, uh, the four part history or actually what we've seen down at the old House of Keys. Uh, what this book does, it really sort of uh, shines a light on that journey and some of the, the, the protests and the, uh, the real public feeling that, that was needed in order to uh, take the Isle of Man from this sort of system that had its origins in the Vikings to something that actually represented the, truly represented the people of the Isle of Man. Really, the, the, a movement of discontent and the demand for reform and uh, voting and so on began here, I would say, in, uh, in 1833, or at any rate, I haven't researched anything earlier, when uh, the newspaper Mona's Herald was founded by Robert Fogg. He was the first leader of the reform movement for the first 30 years, and then the rather surprising emergence of James Brown, a mixed race of a Pudlian, uh, who confronted the Keys and was sent to jail by them in Castle Russian in 1864, subsequently uh, released by order of the courts in Britain, and uh, indeed those who voted for his imprisonment had, had to pay compensation. So that was a very significant moment in the struggle for Manx democracy, really, and it led to the uh, 1866 passing of the uh, House of Keys Act, people which uh, entitled people to vote. And this documents something very, very important that happened 150 years ago, uh, which was the democratic movements within the Isle of Man that brought about, for the first time, popular elections in 1867. So for Tinwald, it's very important in the run-up to that important anniversary that uh, we have uh, this very, very readable and very fine account. The book actually goes on beyond 1866 to uh, 1881, when we were the first legislature in the world to give votes to women, nearly 40 years before the UK. And as you read this, you realise the Isle of Man is actually ahead of the UK in so many ways. Even today, we have um, civil partnerships uh, for, for heterosexuals. That's not being considered in the UK. We give votes to 16-year-olds. We are actually ahead of the game in many ways. Thank you.